it up as well. My back is killing me. Roy, show me what you were talking about. Oh, sign in. I did. See, well, you gotta wait till ordinance comes up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I got your call. We have to come up and then John Carlo. I didn't agree to stand up. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> You still have that kind of uh, leverage. I'm asking nice. about where my son went. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> now I know the power of the snap. <laughs> Chuck didn't stand. What? <laughs> <laughs> Actually. Boom, boom, boom. Get here. Bell The September 21st, 2021 meeting of the City Council of the City of Springfield is called to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Clerk, if you please call the roll. Will do. Alderman Redpath. Here. Alderman Gregory. Here. Alderman Williams. Present. Alderman Fulgenzi. Present. Alderman Purchase. Present. Alderwoman DeCenso. Present. Alderman McMenamin. I'm here. Alderwoman Connolly. Present. Alderman Donlin. Present. Alderman Hanauer. Here. <laughs> Mayor Langfelder. Here. Mr. Mayor, a quorum is present. Thank you. The uh, first item on the zoning agenda is docket number 2021-045. For the property located at 2721 Old Ash Street, petitioner is Lisa Ball. Present zoning classification is V2, General Business Service District, Section 155.034. Requested zoning relief reclassification to R1, Single Family Residence District, Section 155.015. And a variance of Section 155.001, definitions lot, to allow the continued use of two single family residences on the lot and 155.010C. And General provisions to allow two single family residence dwelling units to be located on the lot of record. Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff recommendation is denial of the petition as submitted, but recommend a use variance to allow the two existing single family residences and the approval of a variance of 155.001 definition lot to allow the two existing structures to be continued to be used as residences. Because the property is not being rezoned to R1, the request to vary section 155.010C is unnecessary as that section only applies to residential districts. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is accept the recommendation of Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff. Chair will entertain a motion. Uh, Mayor, I'd like to recommend approval. Second. Been moved and second to accept the Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation for approval and second. Any discussion? Yes, I, I just want to give explanation. So, uh, the young lady that's doing the residential, uh, she was concerned about the difference in the tax rate between commercial and residential. The variance to do residential is fine, whether it is R4 residential. So, <clears throat> I just want to approve it the way it was recommended. Very good. And I think the, the commercial designation continues, but it'll be taxed at the residential rate. Correct. Yeah. Any other discussion? All in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Voting is now open. And the ordinance uh, docket number passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is docket number 2021-046. For the property located at 62 West Fairview Lane, petitioner is Stanley and Jean Roby. Present zoning classification is R1, single family residence district, section 155.016. Requested zoning relief of petition to vary section nine docks of appendix A of the land use plan for Lake Springfield and its marginal properties to allow a dock structure and a boat lift 
to be a maximum of 49 feet from the shoreline at the normal full pool elevation instead of the maximum 35 feet allowed. Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff recommendation is denial. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is grant the petition as submitted with the amendment at a maximum of length of 46 feet instead of the 49 feet requested. Chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the uh, re request as submitted. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve the request as submitted and seconded and discussion. All those in favor of the motion vote yes. Those opposed vote no. The voting is now open. And the docket number passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is docket number 2021-047 for the property located at 4850 International Parkway. And Mayor. I believe this is going to be continued. Yes, please continue this for 30 days. It's been moved to continue for 30 days. Is there a second? Second. All of, any discussion to continue for 30 days? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is docket number 2021-048 for the property located at 3526 South Park Avenue. Petitioner is Windsor Development Group, Inc. Present zoning classification is R1 single family residence district upon annexation. Request the zoning relief reclassification to R3B general residence district section 155.018 and a variance of section 155.480I 1 and 3 landscape screening and lighting regulations, transitional buffer yard requirement pertaining to the existing single family residence and driveway south property line to allow the continued use of the existing residence and driveway, which are currently located within what will be a required transitional buffer yard. Petitioner plans in addition to the existing single family residence to build three to two, I'm sorry, three two-story, eight-unit apartment buildings on the property. Springfield Sangman County Regional Planning Staff recommendation is approval. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is accept the recommendation of the Springfield Sangman County Regional Planning Staff. Chair will entertain a motion. Uh, motion to deny the petition. Is there a second? Motion to discuss. Been moved to discuss. Second. Uh, this is a, uh, this was a split decision at the zoning Commission, I think the uh, the 80 some residents that uh, are objecting to uh, the petition are open minded towards this. Once the <coughs> once the infrastructure is in place, I've driven that road. I've driven South Park many times, and it's it's a narrow road. It's got no lighting. It's a woods. It's a it's a uh, township road um, <coughs> from um, the basically the last quarter mile of the southbound uh, Park Street is, is a uh, township road. It, for the most part, it lacks sidewalks, it lacks lighting, and the residents are very concerned about the safety issues. Um, I think uh, once, if Legacy Point goes into being, um, there's a plan to open up to extend Westchester, which is East West Road, which would then connect with South Park. And I think the residents would be uh, much more accepting of this uh, petition once that takes place because not all the traffic would be northbound from the residents uh, that live to the south uh, on South Park. So uh, that's, I think there's a member of the, uh, a representative of the homeowners that wish to, wishes to speak and then the, uh, Mr. Niehaus it also wishes to speak. I yeah, uh, usually, I think the petitioner comes forward first. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so the petitioner would come forward and um, explain uh, uh, the project in itself, and then we'll <coughs> open up for questions, and then have the uh, any petitioner uh, objectors come forward. Alderman Hanner. I mean, realistically, for um, for the road to go through all the way, what's the time frame for that on on uh, uh, I guess it is it Westchester Boulevard or is it Lim Limburg? I think it's Westchester. It's supposed to go through. What what kind of time frame is that? Have, you know that could be 15 years the way things <laughs> things go. I mean it's yeah. taken just it's taken six years just since Chuck's been on this board to try to get Woodside Road or I mean uh, uh, Hilltop, Hilltop, Hilltop Road done. Hilltop. Hilltop Road. For the record, oh. it took four years. We'll hear about that later. Yeah. <laughs> but Nate Bottom, I don't know if you uh, have that answered. 
tonight? Not yet. So it is probably one of the, it's on the planning to uh, bring the road forward, but the timing as usual is, depends on jurisdiction as well as funding. So if you'd like to explain uh, what you'd like to do the, and state your name and address for the council, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, thank you for hearing this tonight. Um, in regard to the Westchester coming through uh, from the engineers who are designing it, I understand it's at city for review for the, for, for the design. So it's at least that far. The uh, putting that road through is depending on selling a couple more lots in Legacy Point. As soon as those are sold, the funding is there for the road. The sports center coming in will, I think, accelerate the sale of more lots in that area, just like Shields did, brought in the hotel, and Green is still there, and now the sports complex is coming. So for everybody, hopefully it comes through sooner. So uh, Alderman McMenamin had talked about the road. It has been improved. It is county road now because not enough properties have been annexed in to consider it a city road. But that road is 22 feet wide. A semi-tractor trailer is seven and a half feet wide. So if you have two tractor trailers on that road at the same time passing each other, you still have seven feet to clear the sides and in the middle. That's two semi-tractor trailers, not the typical compact car we have today. No lighting. I think there's a guy from CWLP here now. I'm not sure why there's not better lighting or more lighting there, but is it because there's not enough property annexed on that street to justify putting lighting in there? I don't know. There are a lot of streets in Springfield that don't have sidewalks. I think every street should have a sidewalk. Park Street does not. Uh, the last quarter mile um, is a township road. We covered that. Safety issues. I don't know how many people have been killed on South Park Street lately. Have there been a lot? Have there been kids run over? I'm not sure. Have we had, have we had issues over there with people being run over because of the street? I don't think so. Anyway, traffic. I did a traffic study from 7 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. last Wednesday morning, and what's, uh, I was surprised to find that my numbers were so close to the Illinois Department of Transportation's traffic study of that area in 2017. And I will agree that Park Street, north of Center Street, is very busy. And the west artery that goes through Seven Pines is very busy over there also. And just, I was shocked. I don't know how many people will be shocked. In the annual daily traffic going west from the intersection, am I far enough away to take the mask down? No? Okay. I just can't, I just can't see with them. Sorry. There's 3,000 cars a day on that street that go to the west. There's 3,550 cars a day that go to the north from the intersection of Center Street. 850 go to the east, which is basically like 25, 10%, and 425 cars are south of that intersection. And that's based on a study by Illinois Department of Transportation in 2017. So if you do the percentages on the number of cars per day, if I put 24 apartments in there, not everybody goes out of their apartment every day, but if all 24 do, then on average, and, and these are statistics, these are not, I'm not making this up, it's not what I thought, this is actually, I saw it happen and Department of Transportation has cataloged it. One additional car per day would go to the south because out of the 425. Three additional cars from that intersection would go east, 11 cars in addition, if all 24 people left, 11 would go north and nine would go west based on the traffic pattern in that area. So let's take the biggest one going north, 11 cars going north. That's an increase of 0.14%. That's one per thousand. So although we are doing 24 new apartments in there, and hopefully you've seen the elevations, they're gonna look nice. I'm gonna make 0.14% difference in the traffic. That's like spitting in the ocean. I'm not saying there's not an issue with a lot of cars going on that west road. I sat there for an hour and a half and watched it. It's all coming from the north heading west, or it's all coming from the west and heading north. 
when Westchester goes through, which the sooner the better, that's going to just drop dramatically because the people from Seven Pines are going to hit Westchester, go to MacArthur, and go north. It's a lot simpler. The people coming from the north to the south, heading west, are going to go to MacArthur and take Westchester over to where they're going because not enough people live in Seven Pines that they're all just going home. They're all cutting through there to get over onto Westchester, which goes over to Chatham Road. We got to get Westchester Road through there. That's true. But in the meantime, whether it's around two years or whether it's five years, 24 apartments is going to make 0.14%. That's, the, that's if everybody leaves. 0.14% difference in the traffic. It's just not going to it's not going to make a difference in the, in the traffic on that street. It's not going to make a difference that children are, who are standing on the corner wait for a school bus. I saw them. They're not going to get run over by the people who live in these apartments. The streets have been improved lately. I mean, it's new asphalt running down there. They're nice for two cars. It's not safe if you want to park on both sides. But anyway, I think that's what I've got. The, the only other thing I'd like to, to commend the Office of Public Works and I hadn't gotten into this much, but the four zoning or, uh, issues you have before you, two of them were denied by your city public works people. So this is not a rubber stamp. They actually look into this. There were nine criteria they looked at on mine alone just to see if it were uh, worth approval, and they did approve it. Then it did go to zoning commission and got approved. Split vote, but that's what committees are for. You make a vote and, and, and vote because not everybody agrees. But anyway, I'm open for questions if anybody has any questions. Any questions? Yes. Alderman Williams. Did, did, I, did I hear you say an annexation is a, is a for sure thing into the city? The, I'm sorry, sir? The annexation. You're going to annex into the Annexation, city. yeah, it's, it's coming. You guys are going to vote on that. It annex comes in. As R1, I'm asking for the zoning to go from R1 to R3 at the same okay. time. All right. Yeah. Any other questions of the petitioner? Is there anybody uh, want to come up in objection to the petition? Maybe uh, state your name and address for the council. We'd appreciate it. Thank you, Mayor. Tom Schaefer. 2179 South 11th. Nine years ago when this petition was first brought by this petitioner, I lived at 3513 South Park, directly across the street. The dynamics of this area, I'll explain them to you real quickly. There used to be train tracks on Wabash. Further south, there was a set of train tracks. So it trapped Douglas, MacArthur, which is now MacArthur Extended, and Park. It trapped them in between freight trains. Well, the train tracks have been moved. So now you have a train-free area with huge lots, huge backyards. So this developer, Mr. Niehaus and his company, nine years ago, wanted these apartments put in there on a dead end street, which is all single family, R1. And as you drive down around that junction circle and down park, you go in and out of town three times. At the end of park is now the new subdivision, Habitat for Humanity. Uh, will the objectors please stand up? These are the residents that live in the single family homes on South Park that have to put their kids on the school bus at park and center. When the people come down Douglas and hit a dead end, they turn around and drive out 100 mile an hour. When they go down Park and hit the dead end, they turn around and drive out mad 100 mile an hour. It's a, it's a, the dynamic is unhealthy, first of all. The streets are small. The, the place is pitch black at night. There are no sidewalks. Uh, this is a do-over from the exact same petition by the exact same petitioner of nine years ago. The residents who are friends of mine, some of them are very close friends, from years of living there, 20 years, they asked me to speak for them because I guess I'm a better speaker. And I'm gonna try to do them justice tonight. Now, several of you were not here. Chuck was here, Joe was here, and Jim was here nine years ago. Same exact dynamic. Jamming in 24 apartments on a dead end road, which is already traffic nightmare, and, and all single family homes all around it. And the gall of the planning and zoning to say, well, this isn't spot zoning. Well, if it's not spot zoning, what am I standing here for? With a zoning variance, with a downgrade of zoning from R1 to R3. What do you mean it's not spot zoning? This is all R1 on a, on a formerly township road 
that was only recently annexed so they could build habitat, a wonderful development of which my son helped build one of them. Wonderful people that are struggling on a dead end road, which who knows when it's going to be connected further to the south, which leaves Douglas as a dead end, which leaves Park as a dead end. Even MacArthur was cut off unnaturally and gone around for new MacArthur extended and left that area still cut off and blighted with no services, no sidewalks, no street lights, no street signs, no curbs and gutters. And, and this, this developer, God love him, nine years ago he tried this exact same deal. He wanted to jam in on an R1 zoning, which doesn't fit, 24 apartments on a street that's already brim full and because he doesn't want to wait for the road to get finished. We offered to not even oppose the zoning nine years ago if the road went through. So the traffic wouldn't be jammed up at Park and Center, which is absolutely, you take your life in your hands trying to back your car out onto Park Street. And you can see the nods around me. This is, this is a dynamic. I had to take my car because my wife is a bad backer upper as well. I backed my car in at 10 o'clock at night and I backed in my driveway. So that in the morning when the rush hour hit and the crazies were on the road, she could just drive out more normal instead of trying to back out into a nightmare of school buses, dead end road, uh, dead end street, uh, all that cut through from Seven Pines and all of that difficulty because dense zoning is dense problems. You know it and I know it. And why do you think the people that own a single family home resist it? Because they don't want to have a Seven Pines in their front yard. These yards were pleasant. They had, they had space. You didn't hear the toilet flush next door. These lots were big because the trains used to be a problem. Now these wonderful people had the luxury of getting the trains gone, and now they want to instantly, here come the developers, let's jam in 24 apartments. Three eightplexes. We said, will you give us, will you give us one eightplex? Maybe we won't resist. Oh, no, I can't make no money on one eightplex. Well, brother, our neighborhood is not for you to make money on. We live here. This is where our children get the bus to school. This is not a money builder for your profit margins. This is our home. And zoning means something in this town. The R1 zoning means something. It means you've got a yard and a driveway and a garage and a sidewalk, maybe, and some curbs and gutters and a street light, but not with a 24-plex. This is, this is 24 problems waiting to happen to this community. And it was, it was a split vote on planning and zoning nine years ago because they voted it down. Then there was a bunch of phone calls made. They come back on it on a redo and passed it by one vote, which was a nightmare for the residents. Then this council wisely turned it down because it was wrong then and it's wrong now. And when it's wrong, it's wrong. If this was in any one of your wards, you wouldn't want it. It would be resisted because these people, and I want to see one more show of hands of people that are opposed to this. This developer had the gall nine years ago to say everybody was for this when nobody was for it. In fact, there's a petition. Am I correct? The petition has been signed by the residents, which requires an extra special vote because it's so opposed by the people that are around this. And that petition has been done legally and it's been turned in to the clerk. So that changes the vote requirement on this issue. So if anybody else wants to speak, I'll uh, shut up. But it was wrong back nine years ago, and it's wrong now. The street, nothing has changed. The street, except for being overlaid, thank God, it's been paved. That's the only change in this area. Thank, thank you. you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Council members, it's been a pleasure. And I want to welcome Lakeisha to the council. Ma'am, absolutely, congratulations. Thank you. I ask for a no vote. I'm Judy Owens. I live on Center Street, 1045 Center. Uh, I'm also block captain. I'm coordinator for the block captains, everything south of Wabash, uh, all the way over to uh, Shiloh. Uh, our area, we have worked long and hard uh, as neighbors to get to know one another. We have a good neighborhood watch. We've been commended by uh, numerous officers uh, from the Springfield area. Uh, and they wish other areas would have as good uh, neighborhood watch program. We have seen increases come from the Seven Pines area and also south on 
uh, Douglas and Park. Police respond on a pretty regular basis, and uh, we're seeing a little bit more of that. But uh, for this developer to say that nothing has changed uh, since 17 is ridiculous. Uh, it is not safe for us to walk on center. Uh, numerous people have walked in the evening. That is no longer safe. It is not safe for children walking to their bus stops. I've seen children run off the road. Uh, cars come, for some strange reason, they don't come at 35 miles an hour down that street. They come, there are vehicles that come in excess of 50 and 60 miles an hour. And if you are in their way, they are belligerent. If you say anything about you need to slow it down, there are comments we get and we've been asked to uh, be still because the times we live in, we don't know who's going to retaliate. So there are just a number of concerns that we do have, and we would like for uh, this group to strongly consider what the neighborhoods are going to have to deal with if these conditions are not met before uh, construction begins. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Any questions or discussion? Then I'll have the petitioner come back up. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Yep, come on up, Mike Niehaus. Go ahead, Alderman Gregory. I just, I, you know, for me, you know, with this development, I, I, I think it's really important for us to take into consideration that, you know, we have a, a lot of work to do on the city side in that area if we look to, you know, expand it more and stuff. Uh, I, it is tight back there. Um, the concerns that they are talking about, they they have some valid points, and you know I I, I think until we invest in that area and in many areas um, like this that don't have sidewalks and the proper things for people to to be safe, especially when we're talking about young people. Um, one of the things that bothers me the most is, um, and this would be for our developers, is, is just because it hasn't happened. Um, it doesn't mean it can't happen and it won't happen, and that we don't need to take. <clears throat> ultimate precaution in, in areas where kids are getting on school buses and things. So that de really definitely de uh, concerns me. Thank you again. Uh, I just want to clarify a couple of points. One, it's not all R1. Uh, Creasy Construction is at the end of South Park Street. Uh, it's a construction company. And then the lot to the north of me is 14 apartment units on P South Park Street. Um, and there's some other commercial stuff that's on the west side of South Park Street. So it's there. So the other thing I wanted to make sure you understood, nine years ago when I came with this, it passed zoning. It was approved by the city staff. It passed the zoning. I did not have the support of the aldermen of the ward, so I did not bring it to city council. So I, it was not a big deal. I had other things to do, and I left it go. So I just did not come to city council with it. It was not denied, turned down by anyone, just saying. So I uh, appreciate support. Thank you. Alderman Donlin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just for a point of clarification, I'd like to ask Mr. McLaughlin how many votes it takes to get this passed one way or another. We're talking to you, Matt. Right here. Sorry. Can I ask how many votes it takes to because there was mention of a protest petition. Is that there the There is no valid protest petition. It takes six votes to pass. Thank you. Alderman uh, McMinimum. Yeah. I, um, I've worked this area three times for three elections. I've attended two Habitat for Humanity ribbon cuttings on the very southern road to the side there. The woman that was standing here, it may have been your <coughs> habitat for, that's a thumbs up. So I remember attending your ribbon cutting, and you've got two or three children, two, okay. And in all honesty, counsel, I would not want my children to get on their bikes and go on Park Street from where this woman lives. It's just not safe yet. So uh, 
once it becomes safe, then I think a, a yes vote would be appropriate. So I, uh, I'm going to renew my uh, motion for denial, and I, I hope I get a second uh, on, the, on the motion. Second. I move and second to deny any discussion on that. All in favor of the motion to deny, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. Motion fails, two voting yes, eight voting no. Is there any other uh, motion? I move that we motion accept the petition. The petition is submitted. We move to uh, motion uh, for approval. Is there a second? Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? Um, I'd ask uh, Tom Schaefer to come back up and tell us why you think you filed a valid petition. Or if a petition was circulated no. and no. filed. I was misinformed, Mayor. Uh, was no the petition was circulated. Apparently it was either met, did not meet some technical requirement or was not filed. Uh, so I was ill-informed. There is no valid petition. I, I was going to say I believe there's an objector's petition was filed part of the record, but not a protest petition relating to adjoining property owners. So there was an objector's petition filed, and that is of the record. And I hope that the record and the council would reflect that the adjacent property owners made an attempt to file a petition that was the petition they thought they were filing correctly to demand a higher vote. If they were incorrect, that was a novice mistake. And I hope that the council reflects that, that the will of the property owners around this is clear. They're opposed to this because it's too much of a down zoning and it's too intense for the limited road ability and for all the other uh, problems that we've just uh, enumerated. I think that it's the will of the property owners is clear that uh, it deserves a no vote. It's just too intense and uh, it'll cause too many problems. I hope that you keep that in mind. And I thank you very much again for your consideration, Mayor. Uh, Matt, if you could uh, clarify the petition that was filed and where it failed to reach the protesters' <coughs> petition. They filed an objector's petition at the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, which is not the same as a protest petition. So I think maybe that's where no one contacted me about a protest petition. So is it a differential of just where it was filed? No, it's no, a different petition. Completely different. You have to have the people that are enjoying the property. They have 20% and they have to sign a protest petition saying that it's in my cell and city clerk and the attorney for the plaintiff. So how many of the adjoining properties have filed or signed the petition? Nobody. Is there anybody adjoining the properties in the audience? Adjoining the properties of the zoning? So they have to directly adjoin? Okay. Yep. Come on up. Okay. Mr. Clark. I'm the only adjoining property owner that I know is here. No. Uh, Jane Greasy owns to the south. Chris Holloway owns to the north. If you'd come up to the uh, mic, that'd be great. <clears throat> The adjoining property owners would be the street. To the south would be Jan Creasy, Creasy Construction. To the north would be Chris Holloway, the apartments. To the west would be Michael Von Baron Builders. Uh, and then you can go Writings Plumbing to the right of Michael Von Baron and then the Landscape <laughs> Company to the north of that. So that is the, the adjoining parcels to my parcel. And what's the timing of the development? I'm not sure yet. It all depends on zoning. So I really haven't uh, pushed too hard until I make sure I get it done. And what's, the, um, what's your response when they ask for just one uh, unit, you know, eight units, one uh, structure versus 24 starting? I, I don't, really don't believe I even answered that because at the time I decided not to do it because I did not have the alderman's support. So would that be uh, under consideration? It sounds like the petitioners would prefer starting with eight units and then progress from there for the other two uh, parcels? The plans really only make sense if there's 24. And it's, uh, there's plenty of room for three eight plexes. There are only four units on the first floor of each one. There is 20 to, 20, 20 to 30 feet between them. And on the west side is a large detention area. And on the east side, we've got a strip between the fence between us and Michael Von Baron. So, and then to the north is the parking lot. 
and I do, uh, maybe it'll take Matt to answer this, uh, is uh, do you know how much of the roadway on both sides is within the city? Because uh, the reason for no sidewalks or no lighting is because it wasn't in the city, would be my estimation, but I'm not sure if anybody here can answer that. Do you know that? I how do. many parcels are within I the city? I do not, however, as the lot says, the house I own is in the front. To the left of that, it's gonna be a 50 foot right of way for the driveway. We will have sidewalks from back here all the way to the front. If sidewalks can go along the front, I'm, I'm wide open for sidewalks. Okay. Any other discussion? Mr. Mayor, I, I just wanna- Alderman Gregory. I just wanna let the record reflect that I, I was in, uh, my vote is a yes in support of uh, automatic amendment. So noted. So, excuse me, Alderman so, Williams. Explain the yes and the no's. Now I'm confused. You should have went the other if, way. If, if, what? What? So if I voted yes, what am I doing? But uh, the new motion is to approve the petition. I think there's confusion over the first motion that uh, a yes vote was in support of my motion to deny the petition. Right. So. Okay, well, I need to be a no because I don't want to deny this. So yes. So that's a yes. You I voted you correct. Voted I did it right then. Okay. Oh, Very good. So you did it wrong. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so any other discussion? So uh, the new motion is to approve the petition as submitted. And again, to clarify, if you vote yes, that's to approve it. <laughs> if you vote no, that is to uh, reject the uh, petition. Any questions on that? Okay. And we'll. Okay. Voting is. Um, have to clear the board. Roy, it's got you voting yes on that, just to let you know. Mayor, we need to do a roll call. So okay. So we'll do voted. a roll call vote. Again, if uh, you vote yes, that's in favor of passing the petition for the 24 units. If you vote no, that's against the petition. Roll call vote, please. Alderman Redpath. Aye. Alderman Gregory. Nay. So I'm Alderman this. Williams. Right. Yes. <laughs> Alderman Fulgenzi. Yes. Alderwoman Purchase. Yes. Alderwoman Desenso. Yes. Alderman McMenamin. No. Alderwoman Connolly. Yes. Alderman Donnellan. Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Aye. Eight yeses and two names, Mayor. So the uh, petition passes as submitted. Eight <coughs> voting yes, two voting no. And that concludes our zoning portion of the meeting. This time, the chair recognizes Treasurer Busher for the presentation of the financial report. The corporate fund in the month of August had a beginning balance of $42,025,057. We took in total receipts of $11,298,417. We had total disbursements in the month of August of $7,897,286 which left the corporate fund with an ending balance of $45,426,188. Mayor Langfelder, with that ending balance, a portion of that is your ARPA money that is available. The ending balance of the ARPA money for the month of August is $15,202,007. This concludes my report. Very good. Any uh, questions? Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Any discussion to approve the financial report? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. We do have uh, two presentations. The first is Todd LaFountain from CWLP. <clears throat> and Todd is the uh, head engineer for the water department. Okay, so again, my name's Todd LaFountain. I think I met most of you or stood in front of most of you. Keisha, a few others. Nice to meet you. Congratulations. You. I brought with me my superintendent of water purification, Kim Lucas, 
Most of you probably haven't met her, but she's out there day-to-day -day operations at the water purification plant. So. so the title, I got about 12 slides here, a dozen slides. We'll burn through them pretty quick, maybe five-minute presentation, and really the core of this is just to be here for you to ask questions. So, um, so there's been a lot of concern. I've taken a bunch of phone calls, so has Kim, about the taste of the water recently, probably since about September 1st, September, somewhere that first week of September. Um, and then you've probably seen in the media some that uh, we've attributed that to lake turnover, and I'll go into that in a little bit. But uh, the one thing I want to stand here in front of you with Kim and tell you for, with certainty that uh, your water's safe to drink. There's nothing wrong with your water. It continues to meet all federal and state regulations and, in fact, and exceed those regulations. Um, this taste and odor issue is just a non-harmful blue-green algae byproduct, which we'll get into here in a few minutes. So again, it's caused by lake turnover. Um, your screen there, upper left corner, shows what the lake does in the summer months. So it does what we call stratify. The warmer weather kind of accumulates on the top, indicated by the light blue color, and the cooler water sits at the bottom of the lake. So things run along smoothly and happily until we get some cooler weather in the fall. The water on the top gets cooled, becomes more dense, sinks to the bottom of the lake, and basically churns that basin, basin up and intermixes everything within the lake. That's represented by the, the picture in the upper right corner of the slide. So these are problems that are common to all surface water bodies or surface water sources in lakes across Illinois and really the nation. This slide here is a slide from the AWWA, so the National American Water Works Association. And then what we've shown in a, in a red circle there is kind of the common surface water taste and odor complaints. And lake turnover is listed as number two. So it's one of the big issues that all surface waters kind of work their way through at different times of the year. Ours here in central Illinois are usually a little rougher in the uh, fall as opposed to the spring. So again, we get back to this whole discussion on blue-green algae, what's given the water that little bit of taste. So what it is is a byproduct of the decay of uh, blue-green algae. It's MIB and geosmin are the two technical terms for what the compounds are. Again, they're non-toxic, they're non-harmful, but they do put, give you that little dirty taste to the water. So this is what it's characterized, and I'm sure this is mainly what you're hearing from your constituents, is there's a musty, earthy, dirty type taste to the water, and sometimes like an aftertaste, maybe a stale taste. And that's indicative of these geosmin and MIB compounds. The issue we're having currently is directly related to MIB. Geosmin is being pulled out of the treatment, through the treatment process, and is a non-issue this fall, but uh, it is, is gives a similar taste. So when we're talking about these things, we're talking in nanograms per liter. I mean, just an extremely tiny amount. So uh, a lot of times in drinking water industry and what you hear for MCLs is milligrams per liter, which is like an eyedropper full in an Olympic swimming pool. So in a nanogram per liter is an eyedropper full distributed through a thousand Olympic sized swimming pools. So Anyhow, the human threshold for um, tasting this type of stuff is in that order of 10 to 30 nanograms per liter. So that's why sometimes you hear people say, hey, I can taste something in the water, and then you ask your buddy or your, your friend, and they say, well, I don't really taste it. So all our taste, our ability to taste is a little bit different, and our sensitivity is a little bit different. And usually, we're in that 15 or less nanograms per liter. We're slightly over that, and that's why some people can taste this, and it's more offensive to some than it is to other, others. So one of the questions we get out at the plant and then at, at our water distribution office is, why hasn't this, why, this, why hasn't this happened before? And the, and the answer is it has. It happens every year, um, some years to a higher degree than others. This particular year in the lake is, is the worst or the highest concentrations of MIB I've seen since we started characterizing MIB in geosmin. Typically, we'll see levels of about 40 nanograms per liter out in the lake. 
We're seeing numbers in excess of 100 nanograms per liter this year. So we're pulling the bulk of that out of this water supply. But again, if we don't get it down and we have limits to our treatment process, if we can't get it down to under 15, there is a certain segment of the population that finds that dirty, tasty, or dirty, musty smell, they find that offensive. So one of the things, too, that uh, I'll mention here is, uh, and we'll get into this a little more with aeration system, is uh, the lake's been particularly stagnant this year. Uh, we haven't had the power plants running, and you know, if anybody's familiar with that operation, those who pull a lot of water off the bottom of the lake, run them through the power uh, cooling cycle, and discharge the warmer water to the lake. And what that did effectively was act as a giant aeration system. It kept that, kept that lake water quality consistent. So now, back when I started here in the 90s, I would look, coming out of school, look at the data from the lake. I said, well, what's going on? There's, there's no stratification ever. And it was the power plants, right? It was the cooling effect of the power plants. And now we operate more like a traditional lake, and we're more susceptible to these lake turnover events. So mitigations, what are we doing? Well, we're doing a lot. We're doing everything that we can out of the plant, we assure you that. So one of the things we're doing is, uh, go ahead and move to the next slide. So we're, we're continuously sending these uh, lake samples out for analysis. Now this isn't something that we can do locally here. In fact, there's only two or three labs around the United States that we found that are effective at analyzing for these compounds. They're not regulated by the EPA or anybody else. We, we're doing this you know, as a proactive measure and on a volunteer uh, basis. We're sending these compounds or these analysis out. So we send the, send the analysis out at different lake levels and we're chasing the best water we can out in the lake. So we'll alter the lake level intake elevation to try to find those, the minimum amount of MIB to start with as our raw product. And then we're hitting the water with a heavy dose of what we call powdered activated carbon. So we're feeding a blended product. There's an art to this too. You gotta match up the pore size that you see in your screen there, the carbon with the actual angstrom size of the MIB to get maximum removal. And we've got this fine tuned to about 80%. We're pulling out about 80%. And that's really the practical limit of what a powdered activated carbon feed system can do for you. So other things we're doing, uh, sometimes you'll see these water treatment plants, they'll circulate their sludge, and we don't do that, but, uh, and sometimes you'll see MIB and geosmin pockets that'll grow in the sludge and your clarification and your purification process. We've cleaned everything out to try to make sure that everything's fresh and, and clean within the water purification process. And we also, you might see people out flushing hydrants trying to get rid of some of that, that older water in our system and, and freshen that up for, for us. So some other things that kind of go under the radar that we do continuously, and these are more long-term fixes. You know, our water resources people are out there busy all year long, you know, and have been for years trying to convince farmers and other landowners out in the watershed to install best management practices. So the, the the tie here is that if you can put in filter strips, you can do good rip wrapping around the lake and, and keep the nutrients out of the lake. The blue-green algae aren't going to grow if there's not food in the lake, so you're not going to have them decay and produce MIB or geosmin or any taste and odor compounds. And then one, one other thing we're looking at, um, you see here is a lake aeration system, specifically north of Lindsay Bridge. So this is what the, the actual manufacturer recommended for the installation for optimum lake health north of Lindsay Bridge. And in fact, you know, back when the Dahlman units were running, um, this is about the influence that the return, the warm water, warm return water had on the lake. So it's, uh, you know, a big capital project, but we're, we're looking into potentially at least starting on a small scale in that upper north corner of the lake near the intake structure, try to improve the overall lake health, and maybe bring those raw MIB numbers and geosmin numbers down to where the lake water is manageable through the treatment process. And so as always, you know, we, I think some of you got my phone, email, 
get your Kims. We're always available to answer questions, weekends, nights, whatever it takes. Um, we'll send somebody out. We'll work with, with customers. Um, we're here to, to serve you and your constituents. Alderman Repap and then Alderman Donlin. Thanks for coming in, Todd. We've all had yeah. we've all had complaints from our constituents about the water. Um, what, what, how long do you expect this taste to be in the water? So, yeah, that's one question I can't answer with the, any definitive, um, I guess, response. But uh, I guess it was Monday was the last time we sent individuals out to the intake to see what the lake was doing. And there were signs that the lake was starting to restratify at that time. Is so I'm hopeful we're close to the end. Is it possible for us to run the pumps on the on the electric side, not necessarily while they're generating, but just run the pumps to stir the water to get it to we, come back to normal? Yeah, we've had that internal discussion. Um, I do have fears in doing that. It's not a terrible idea for by any stretch. But, uh, you know, the one component that we don't have there, if we're not producing power, is we're not adding heat to the water. So in essence... Usually this MIB and Geosman sits on the bottom of the lake in that bottom layer. And uh, what we, when, it, when the lake turns over, everything gets intermixed. So if we don't, with that heat component, you know, you got that warmer water, it's just gonna, even though you, the, uh, the dolman pumps are pulling water from the bottom of the lake, you add heat to it, it's gonna sit on the top and we're drawing down maybe 15 feet and it's gonna keep it up there, UV light, aeration, is probably going to make things better before it settles down anywhere close to our intakes. So I'm fearful that we might short circuit the whole process and make matters worse. Okay. Yeah. And, and the filtration system doesn't take the taste out. It, it, it's still safe water to drink, but the taste is going to be there until this settles down, correct? So yes, um, the filtration system itself does not. The powdered activated carbon does. And what it is, it's called a process called adsorption. So it's just, it, it works its way into the pores of the carbon, but there is a practical limit to what that carbon will do for you. It won't take the numbers down to zero. So just as a, for example, previously, the highest number I've ever seen in the lake is about 40 nanograms per liter. So if we take out 80% of that, which we have historically, um, you're down below the human threshold for being able to taste MIB. When we're up at 110 or 20, Right, eighty percent of that. We're still above, not by much, but we're above the, the threshold for human taste. So, one one final question: Can I have a copy of this slideshow uh, for that I can use? Could sure. you email me that or text it to me so I can sure. uh, send it out to my homeowners associations because they've all they've all asked what's going on and it yep. would help. And we'd be glad to come out and talk to them as okay. well if, if you find got, that helpful. You already got a whole list of calls that are coming to you from our office. So. Okay, all right. <laughs> thank you. Alderman Donnelly. Thank you, Mayor. Todd, thank you. Thanks again for your willingness to come and explain what's going on. You're uh, have, welcome. have gotten some calls, and in particular, uh, in some areas off of Bruns Lane uh, and in some neighborhoods, they say that they are in like, like the end of the line, meaning that they constantly have, and I'll, and I'll talk to you about the neighborhood okay. offline here, but they constantly have uh, rust in the pipes and problems and uh, does does being in that kind of a situation uh, multiply the problem? Make it well, it does in, in a number of ways, not just for the problem we're experiencing tonight or today. It's, uh, you know, if you're on the end of a long dead-end main, you know, age is not your friend in the water business, yeah. right? The, um, we generally size things to try to keep things moving and keep things fresh. So we do have a number of areas within our distribution system. We say they're on our flush list. And so we have crews that run out and flush on a routine basis certain areas where there's not a lot of demand at the end of a long, you know, bigger main. So well, the, the um, area, that may be a candidate for that. The area that I'm talking list. about is on Dawn Drive. Individuals called, and I think I forwarded some information on to you guys uh, in the past on this issue. And it's obviously worse in that area. Yeah. And w one of the things that you mentioned in your slideshow presentation was that flushing can help. And, uh, and they haven't been, evidently haven't been flushed according to the resident I talked spoke with uh, yesterday and uh, corresponded with me via email today. So if you guys could get out to the Dawn Drive that's just off of Burns sure Lane, it would be greatly appreciated. Yeah. We'll get somebody out there tomorrow. Thank you. Yep.
Yeah, if any council members have specific areas, if you would uh, forward those via email. And, and one, Mayor, if I can, are you okay with us? I mean, is, I know it's in the presentation. It's about as public as it can be. It's on the screen. Is that something we could put on social media, this this uh, email? Is. Yeah, that, that presentation, okay. right? It, uh, it can, I mean, you can present it at one I mean, of your I mean the, board in meetings particular or on slide social media. Sure. I mean, in particular, the, the email and the phone number and all that. That's okay to put that? That's yeah, the one you so want? Yeah, so that last slide you're talking right. about, right? Yeah. So that is our water dispatch. So it's our water distribution dispatch number. And then that's our public information office um, email. But uh, we have somebody sitting at that water dispatch desk 24-7, 365. And they keep a log of all the calls that come in. And uh, they, they roll that through any, any of these type episodes. So we've Todd, got a record if, of what happened and when. So. You know if something's been put out by CWLP on social media today. I just haven't yes. looked. It has. Yeah. Okay, then we'll share that. That's even better. Release. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other uh, questions or discussion? Thank you very much, Todd. Yep, thank you for your patience. Mm -hmm. Next, we have a uh, presentation from Nate Bottom, Director of Public Works. Oh, this should be good. Holy cow. Oh, my God. Thank you. Who I trust? Do that well. Thank you, Director. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Let's exchange. No. Hi, Nate. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Alderman, thank you for your time. I'm just going to give you a quick update on our infrastructure and some of the projects we have going on, as well as um, registration and demos. Um, the, we are responsible for approximately 625 miles of roads, including 95 alleys and 27 uh, lake lanes that we help uh, lake services with. Um, sewers, we have approximately 700 miles, uh, including 355 miles of sanitary, 140 miles of combined, and uh, 200 miles of storm sewer. Uh, and then sidewalks, we have over 16 million square feet of sidewalks and 27,000 curb ramps that we maintain, as well as uh, 290 traffic signals, 150 RRs, uh, and about 140 we have a shared maintenance agreement with, uh, with IDOT. And then 21 bridge structures, as well as um, 30,000, over 30,000 trees, we estimate. Um, our responsibility is um, to inspect the in, uh, infrastructure whenever we have issues, as well as monitor it whenever uh, the construction is going on, and then put a plan together in order to repair it um, long-term wise. And then, and then um, obviously, our divisions uh, also do the repair of the, of the uh, infrastructure. In regards to sidewalks and curb ramps, a lot of times uh, what we do is we will take a look at the bicycle and pedestrian plan uh, when long-term planning, as well as uh, we will take a look at our our work orders and service requests that we see from from aldermen, as well as uh, constituents uh, throughout the wards. And then uh, curb ramps, a lot of times uh, whenever we are doing ADA improvements with roads, we will do the curb ramps at that time uh, to, to make sure that they are ADA compliant. Um, over the last uh, six years, we've done over 1.3 million square feet of uh, sidewalk and 4,000 curb ramps. Uh, so our roadway maintenance goal is to, to do preventative maintenance whenever we can. We want to spread the tax dollars as far as possible. Every $1 you spend in preventative maintenance saves you $10 down the road if you can uh, catch the problems early. So we've been really um, trying to strive to do that uh, moving forward. And uh, so and we rate roads on a um, – Annually, we rate roads, but we rate every road every other year. So we'll do asphalt roads are, are the most roads we have, so we'll do them, in essence, every odd year. And then concrete, um, oil and ship, 
and brick streets the, the following year. And then we, we continuously rotate those. Um, some preventative maintenance measures that we do are crack filling and surface treatment. So the, the higher, we, we use the PACER manual, which was developed by the University of Wisconsin to rate our roads. One means it's failing, um, two means it's in poor condition, and then it goes on up, three, four is fair, five, six is good, seven, eight is very good, nine, uh, ten are excellent. So we want to try to do some of those uh, preventative maintenance measures earlier. So sometimes you, somebody will say, you just did something on that road a few years ago. Well, we're trying to spread the tax, uh, tax dollars further and start utilizing preventative maintenance measures such as crack filling, asphalt rejuvenators, and, and sealants in order to do that. And um, a lot of times uh, I'll meet with you aldermen too um, in, in January to go over our plan for the year on our, in regards to our maintenance program. Um, here's just a, a good example. Um, so at the beginning, that was when we did a, a, a bond issuance, and there was a, we were spending about $30 million a year um, on roadway improvements, and then now we're spending approximately $13 million. So it shows you a good example of how much it basically, by do, doing preventative maintenance measures, you can spread the tax dollars a little bit further. Um, this year, I, I believe, uh, so in FY16, we did $30 million worth of work in 102 miles. That's about $295,000 per mile that we were spending um, on roads. However, uh, this past year, or this year actually, we're spending approximately $13 million doing 72 miles uh, worth of work, which is $180,000 per mile. So you can see, see an improvement. We're trying to, like I say, spread our tax dollars uh, as far as possible. And we're doing work, I know it's kind of hard to see in this exhibit, um, it's kind of small, but we're doing work everywhere throughout the city. We, we don't look at the wards, we look at the need and everything along those lines. Um, our roads are rated by our professional um, engineering technicians and then it's uh, uh, evaluated too by our construction engineer who helps put the contract together whenever we're doing these contracts. And then also um, our city crews do a lot of the maintenance work as well. We did in the last two and a half years, we've done over 10,000 work orders. And this is just a quick um, exhibit of the uh, various work that we've done throughout the city. And as you can see, um, work is um, completed through, throughout the city. Um, in regards to our traffic signals, um, we try to prioritize uh, working with CWLP. They do a lot of our maintenance. We also work very closely with IDOT. And, uh, we t try to take a look at where we're having service requests. And then uh, we do get requests too to, hey, there are a lot of accidents here. So we look at the various uh, warrants for traffic signals uh, whenever we're um, uh, looking at, as well as the age, age of, the, of the signals whenever we're looking at replacing them or installing new signals. Uh, just in the last five years, some of the major projects, we, well, we worked in, in partnership with IDOT to improve, that modernize the signals on Wallbash and Avenue. We also improved Taylor and Stanford uh, intersection, as well as we've done numerous um, controller replacements, I think 35, as well as uh, 25 uh, detection camera upgrades. And we've also replaced uh, numerous detector loops, which are the loops inside the pavement. Uh, and then in regards to traffic signals up this upcoming year, we just opened the bid for the phase one downtown uh, traffic signal modernization which will include our new advanced transportation management system that we're going to, uh, which is called Centrax, as well as uh, 19 signal modernizations. We are also uh, planning, on, due to the warrants that I mentioned, you can also remove off of that, and uh, there are four traffic signals that uh, can be removed now, and then we're also doing 75 control or cabinet and uh, audible pedestrian signal upgrades too. Uh, also in FY23, I believe is when we're shooting to also let uh, 11th and Ash and 11th and Laurel, we need to get right away for, for that project though in order to get that one complete. Uh, and then we've uh, just begun uh, design engineering on Cokie Mill and Greenbrier for just, just specifically that traffic signal. <clears throat> Um, bridges, they are conducted um, by the county on a biannual uh, basis. They are um, responsible for all the bridges within the county, so they help us rate those, and then we work very closely with them when, when developing our plan. Uh, we did, in the last uh, five years, we have completed the Fayette Avenue Bridge. Uh, we just recently opened up the Drawbridge Road, uh, completed that in, uh, this past August, and we're planning on letting A Street Bridge in uh, as early as this January, and then uh, Churchill Road will follow with the next fiscal year. Um, sewers, um, sanitary and combined, we try to prioritize through the NASCO rating system as well as we do evaluate the various um, service request work orders and asset history that we have in, in, within CityWorks, and also work off of our capital improvement plan. 
Uh, some of the major projects that we've completed over the last few years include the downtown sewer repair and uh, lining project, as well as William Street Play Sewer, um, and we had a couple Natchez trays, so it was some, uh, we had received, and Thames River, we received DNR grants in order to complete those, as well as a major um, sewer district repair and lining on Cook Street over $5 million. That was a major project. Uh, and then uh, we're planning, we do have State Street planned uh, here shortly, and maybe, maybe some additional ones uh, with our funds. Um, and our major road projects, um, we have the Springfield Area Transportation Study, um, our, our group, that's the Metropolitan Planning Organization um, that, that we uh, meet on a, and a monthly basis. There's a technical committee as well as the policy committee, and we work off of the Long Range Transportation Plan. Uh, which is our long-term plan that we update every five years, as well as our transportation improvement plan, which is more of our living document that uh, we update uh, annually, and then sometimes we have amendments through that on a, on a monthly basis. Um, some of the major projects we've completed, though, over the last five years include the Carpenter Street underpass, as well as Stanford Avenue, Fox Bridge to Taylor Avenue. Um, the 11th Street extension was a major project, uh, as well as uh, the two phases of Archer Elevator that have now wrapped up and the Jackson Street um, streetscape as well as the detention that's helped uh, alleviate some of the flooding on the town branch. Uh, and we completed Ash Street uh, just last year and, and we wrapped up uh, Laurel Street, actually and opened it up yesterday at 3.30. Um, we have a lot of major road projects, in, railroad projects in process. Fifth and Sixth Street underpass. Um, we uh, continue work on the Union Pacific side uh, at this time. Uh, Norfolk Southern is running on their on their side and on their bridge, new bridges now. Uh, Cook Street and South Grand, we're just beginning uh, construction on that. Uh, we, we're starting to do the demos as well as the utility relocations. That will continue, and then uh, Lenhart, Bunker Hill, and Isles Avenue, that project should be wrapping up within the next couple weeks. Uh, Hilltop Road, like I say, we will, we're will. we just um, wrapping up all the bid documents and everything along those lines, and flat should be starting um, as early as later, later this month, probably more than likely, though, in October. Uh, Madison and Jefferson Street underpasses, we are shooting for a winter letting for that. Um, and then Stanford Avenue, we are also trying to shoot for winter letting. That's uh, the, the phase between 11th to Foxbridge to upgrade that. Um, and then we do have a lot of projects under design. Uh, we're north, the usable segment six, which includes North Grand Railroad structures and, as well as Union Pacific track work. Uh, we're working on land acquisition as well as design. I think we're, I'd say, 70% uh, complete on the design of that as well as um, we're just getting into Cokie Mill Road, Old Jack to Washington Street. We're working on the hydraulic report this time, looking to have a public meeting um, later in, in the winter, hopefully in early in the, maybe in November, as early as November. Cockrell Lane, we are working on the design on that as well uh, for reconstruction from uh, just uh, west of, or south of Mathers Road to Ogden Drive, as well as uh, on Lawrence and MacArthur and Lawrence and Walnut Street. Uh, just uh, getting, begun design on that. Uh, I'm doing some surveying on that and looking at some conceptual designs for that uh, this time. Headley Road, West White Oaks uh, to Cokie Mill, which also includes the improvements to West White Oaks Drive. We just had a public meeting on that. and. Uh, um, we, I think we have heard uh, alternative that we will be moving ahead with and, and coming into design. Um, so so that, that project continues. And then a, a few that um, we are going through the QBS process on and uh, should be selecting consultant here shortly include MLK Drive. We just were able to leverage some HSIP safety funds for that from Clear Lake Avenue to South Grand Avenue to do a road diet and sidewalk uh, improvements there. Um, as well as uh, Adloff, uh, the Adloff road drainage and the Wheeler and Adams uh, road modifications. Uh, so we're, we'll be looking at some, uh, selecting consultants here, here shortly on those. Uh, and then we also work very closely with IDOT on, on their major projects, MacArthur Boulevard. Um, we just had, there was a public meeting recently. We, should, we will be having a CAG meeting here shortly, I believe, um, I believe it's within the next, within the next month. And then uh, we'll have a subsequent uh, public meeting in regards to that project. That's a context-sensitive solution project that we'll have um, a lot of uh, public input on, as well as uh, Stevenson Drive. Um, we're looking at doing ADA overlay sidewalk and bike accommodation improvements, um, basically from the interstate all the way, uh, basically um, almost down to, to 6th Street. 
uh, as well as Sangman and Dirksen, looking at putting in dual left turn lanes and improving that intersection as well. We're closely with them. Then uh, the, the one that probably, uh, Sixth Street, uh, the first phase of that should be starting within the next year or so. That includes the three lane widening, uh, sidewalks and turn lanes. Uh, on, the, on, the, on the south portion and the north portion will follow. Uh, engineering, I know uh, the mayor gets on to you. He wants, he wants it built right away if we can. Obviously, uh, Alderman Road Path 1 and Hilltop built right away, but it does take some time. Preventative maintenance wise, we can get those out a lot quicker. Uh, it doesn't take as much engineering um, to do those. To do those uh, we can get those out pretty, fairly quickly within, within a construction season um, as we have it planned. However, whenever we are doing reconstruction of roads, that can take three to, three to five years whenever we're doing that. And then once you um, get Land Act involved, it, it, it can take it um, a lot longer, especially if you have to go through condemnation <coughs> process. And this is just a really good document that explains the various processes, uh, the environmental process, uh, the various um, agreements that you have to submit, especially if you're using federal funds. Um, so I just attached that for your reference, but I'll, I'll just gleam over that for right now. As you're well, and then just Hilltop Road history. And we did start the Hilltop Road design in 2017. Um, and, uh, you know, for the multi-use trail, that was the first phase of the project. And then we finally did have to get a jurisdictional transfer from, from Rochester Township. In order to complete that, we were able to complete that uh, and get that completed. Uh, and then 2019 through 2020, we ended up doing the, the land acquisition process. It was kind of trying at times. Uh, we did have to get numerous parcels. Uh, however, we were able to get that completed in 2020 and start construction in 2020 and then, uh, and then wrap that up uh, th this year. Uh, and then in regards to Hilltop Road, the second phase, which is um, the multi-use trail from Destiny Drive to Rochester Road and the road segment from Route 29 to basically to, uh, to Rochester Road. We started to design on this early this year and um, I was very impressed with our staff in order to be able to get that done in such a short time frame. And then we were obviously just went out to bid and it's up for, for final passage tonight. Um, some of the challenges that we have obviously are we only have a limited amount of budget. We'd love to, we'd love to have as much money to fix every single road, to modernize every single road if we can. Uh, but generally when we look at that, we look at the ADT and uh, you know, the need and the potential for development and everything along those lines uh, when, when modernizing them as well as traffic signals. I mentioned uh, the different uh, warrants that we, we look at there. And then uh, oil and chip, uh, obviously a lot of people are, don't necessarily like oil and chip roads and um, it is a good preventative maintenance measure that we can use. However, we are looking at uh, converting some of those from oil and chip to asphalt. There are a lot of good preventative maintenance measures. Once you convert it to asphalt that we can do, such as those rejuvenators, to, to help extend the life of that. Uh, and then obviously stormwater utility and funding um, to address urban, ur urban flooding. We don't necessarily have a designated for, um, source for that, so we utilize... Uh, our Fund 95 as much as possible and, and, and do the best we can with what we have. And then uh, we also have the USC EPA the potential mandate, the mandate for uh, the SSO eliminations uh, on the Northeast area. Um, so potential ARP uh, improvements that we think are that we could utilize the funds for are oil and chip to asphalt road conversions as well as the uh, supplementing and helping out maybe increasing the overhead sewer uh, program. That's at 75% that we will match. Um, and, and then the 25% that the homeowners come, come up, uh, have to come up with, we can increase that amount maybe um, to help uh, some of the basement backups that people are having in their house if we so choose. Uh, that's an idea. Um, as well as uh, addressing some of the northeast area uh, for the U.S. Uh, EPA order that we have, um, starting to line some of those projects and take care of that and do some of the pilot projects as well for that project. And then there are various sewer rehabilitation replacement throughout every single ward too that we need we, that need done and we have on the capital improvement plan that can be completed as well as, um, you know, obviously Todd was talking about our water source and uh, getting as many, I think we're, we have over 50% of the uh, houses on sewer now, but there, we still have numerous uh, houses to get off. So, so getting those sewers off of, off of the lake also uh, is a potential source. Um, and then um, here are just some ideas. It's not set in stone or anything along those lines, but these are potential road conversions based upon either ADT, where it is, leading to the hospital or schools. And uh, a lot of these have actually been brought up by, by you all, um, council members. Um, so, so this is a potential list uh, for, for roads um, spread throughout the city. Uh, I had, uh, Bond Street, Millard and North Grand, Columbia, Mossman and Park, 
uh, Fox Bridge Road, uh, Greenbrier, Huntley and Warson, Inner Urban Avenue, Carl Babiak and uh, Wenzel, Lennox, Linden Lane, Old Rochester Road, Rising Moon Road have been various ones that have come up and inner, inner potential ones that we could utilize uh, for the funds depending on how much we want to allocate to that if we want to. As well as potential sewer rehabilitation, um, there's plenty of grouting lining that we need to do throughout the city and, and replacement of sewer. So this is just an example of some that we had on the capital improvement plan um, th throughout the city of Springfield. So like I said, not set in stone or anything along those lines. These are just potential sewer rehabilitation projects. Uh, now in regards to housing too, I know there's been a lot of stuff out there. So we are trying, so in regards to our cases, and Daryl can help me out um, if, uh, if, if so chooses, um, but we are trying to be more proactive. Um, however, we are, we are proactive on a lot of cases. About 60% right now of our cases are reactive versus proactive. We're actually, in City Works, we're going to make a case where we can show that too and, and quantify that even, even more so, um, so that we can pull actual reports off that moving forward. But that's what we estimate at this time based upon based upon the sample size of uh, what, what um, the, our housing division evaluated. Um, we did do a reorganization of the housing in order to adjust our zones. We added an inspector and adjust our zones, for, kind of shrink them down, especially for the areas that we have problems in. Um, so we're looking at doing that and then allowing, that allows them to be, do more proactive inspections as well. Um, just in the last two years, um, I know we did over, we did over 10,000 inspections in 2020 and 9,300. 9, uh, 46 inspections to date, um, so so we're going to go past that number, obviously. In regards to violations and fines, um, we also, um, I think we did 3,200 notices last year, collected $92,000 uh, worth of fines, and then this year we've already issued uh, 31,000, sorry, 3,161 uh, violation notices and already collected over 75 uh, to date. Uh, in regards to administrative court fines, um, a lot of those building, building fines and um, uh, those other fines, uh, uh, we collected 175,000 in 2020 and um, 171,000 to date already. And then uh, the vast majority of public work cases, there are some police uh, police tickets in there, but the major the, the vast majority are are public works related cases. Uh, in regards to registration, um, you know, in, in January, we lost our planning coordinator. Um, and in February, we went out and for, for the request of the, to Harvard Bloomberg, basically requesting um, somebody to come in and evaluate our process uh, because we really wanted to improve it, um, make it more transparent and holistic and tie everything together. Uh, and that's what Megan did. Um, she, just, she, she just issued the report. and. Um, we worked very closely with her, um, agreed on, on on basically the line chair, her, her recommendations, and, and are starting to implement some of them already. Um, we wanted to standardize the process as much as possible, and we wanted to add some additional status builds in our registration process just so that we can track it a little bit better. Uh, for some reason, it just wasn't looked at up front when we did the initial um, 2018 PLL in, uh, inspection prior, prior to me being the director. But uh, but but we just um, you know we, they, I think we're just trying to get it out so we get the get the system running. But we're cleaning it up, um, and we're also allowing us to automate registration cases from housing. So when our housing inspectors are out there and they have a few different cases, they can automatically generate a building request. It doesn't, it doesn't, we don't have it necessarily in an email that, get, that gets lost if somebody's off. It, it will go automatically into our, our PLL system, CityWorks PLL system. So I think that will help uh, make sure nothing, things don't get lost through the crack. Um, also, we are conducting a pilot survey when, um, with a, a pilot street level imagery um, uh, for blight analysis right now. So one of our inspectors is driving around basically with a camera attached to his car at this time. Um, this week and into next week to see if us um, utilizing this technology will help us in, in, in identifying the blight analysis and uh, help us manage and proactive, proactively manage um, registration in, the, in, the, in, in various cases, OCK Pro cases. Uh, we're also looking at developing a blight scorecard too, maybe similar to, uh, not as a, a, as extensive as New Orleans, but um, developing a blight scorecard of our own. So we want to see how the street level imagery comes in. We may, we may blend that in together. 
Um, also, we are going to add resources um, available to our violation notices, just to let people know, hey, um, we have um, the household hazardous waste pickup, we have large item pickup, so that people know, as well as I work with OPED, too, saying, hey, you have these resource resources, too, um, you can possibly utilize these funds in order to rehab your house. Uh, and then also a major thing that we're looking to doing too, I'll um, be bringing the ordinance um, here shortly, is we're proposing to shorten the registration time from three years to one year. Because the longer the houses sit vacant, obviously the worse it is. So we want to stay on top of them, get them, and then and then and get it taken care of. And then we're going to continue, like I say, we're, we're, we are changing a lot. We're going to continuously try to improve it, improve it. So please give us your feedback. Uh, I think that we'll, it'll really improve our CityWorks tracking um, and registration dashboard. And, uh, and this is something that we've developed um, through a portal. We're trying to push some of these maps out more so. Like I said, this is, a, this is a work in progress. We are um, redoing our case. We are rebuilding it right now. But this is on the website um, for you to check out. Um, and and uh, it, it provides basically a list of where the registration permits that we have at this time. Like I say this is, this is a work in progress. We are cleaning it up, but it is out there. And then we will have the various cases. And then you'll be able to click. So you, you will be able to. I'm sorry, this is being a PowerPoint. I can't necessarily run through all the software. But you'll be able to click on a list um, and, and see the specific case and where it is in the, in the process. <clears throat> Uh, in regards to demolitions, too, we have already completed 20 to date this year. Generally, we've, we haven't started them. We, we generally, our demo season is generally November through March. Um, we potentially have up to 80 um, more demos that we, we could do. We may be, we're probably going to be looking at coming with a, with a supplemental so that we can uh, knock some of them out um, here, here shortly. Uh, and then we have been working on them, though. Um, uh, the legal department has is, is definitely been uh, working, working on them through, throughout the process. Um, I know that I think we have uh, right now about 26 court orders already to demolish. Um, we have 24 immediate and continuing uh, hazards last time we checked as well as we, we have about 14 pending for court. That will increase because um, we've also already just issued 15-day um, notices to repair, demolish another 60, and then we'll do the order the title work for those probably in in, in, um, in segments of 20 in order to get that. And then I think we could have an additional basically 80 that we could be ready for when, when our demo season does start. And then obviously we're going to continue to get the firehouses that pop up and everything along those lines. But um, I think that we really could uh, make a push to get a lot of them down. Um, we have talked with uh, operating engineers of 965. We talked with them earlier in the spring. And then uh, I just had subsequent conversations with them yet again. And, and they're, they're on board to help us out, which will help out tremendously um, for getting the buildings down. And we'll have our, uh, our crews uh, help out with the hauling it away. And we're continuously trying to improve this process uh, as we move along and, and are developing a, a dashboard for the demos as well. Um, and then we also, I know that you, we used to have two additional uh, administrative secretaries, and it was very uh, tedious with the old alderman reports. However, we want the system to work for us, so um, we've ha created an alderman report um, now that will basically be updated, uh, live data, and that will be available through the portal. Um, and you'll, in essence, be able to see it. Um, so we have your, your wards, in essence, colored um, wh where they are. And then the, purple, the dots are requests that you submitted, service requests that you've submitted. And then it links up to see if uh, basically, well, let me go to the next slide. Um, the service at the service request, what the service request status is, if it's closed, the problem it was like it, this one's a drainage issue uh, that you just submitted uh, last week <laughs> that, we're, that we're dealing with, and we do have a work order on that, and it is open. And then once we do complete that work order, in essence, it, it will be closed at this time or at that time. So I just kind of ran through that pretty quick here. Just some uh, infrastructure links. Uh, the IDOT it takes time one that I hit on. Uh, we do also utilize the, comp the Sprinkle Comprehensive Plan too. I should I, I didn't mention that when I was talking about the long range transportation plan and the transportation improvement plan that we use when planning for our projects, as well as the bike and pedestrian plan link in our, our sewer planning documents. So. Alderman Hanar, then yeah. Alderman Gregory, and Thanks. Alderman Conley. Thanks, Nate. I, I just want to compliment your department. It, you know, whenever we've we've had a problem, you and Daryl have, have always been on it. Your staff's always been on it, and I appreciate that. Um, you guys are the ones that we we seem to deal with more than 
the other eight, you know, the other de uh, departments. Um, so at least for, for my award. Um, one thing that you didn't put in your report that that you guys do a lot of, and I'd like to see a little bit more improvement. I know we've got some things down the road, but but we got to do something about speeding up um, permit processes for building permits and things like that. Um, I've gotten quite a few complaints about uh, excess time it, that it's taken to get a, just a general building permit to start on a, on land and and, and all that. Um, now, about three years ago, we, we were pushing to get city works to where we could um, we can automate the planning process where the plans are submitted online, and then multiple people can look them at look at them. Where where are we on that? It's so we're close. Um, obviously, we kind of wanted to get the registration stuff fixed right. because in order to you want to have everything kind of flow in correctly in City Works. You want it all built correctly in City Works in order to go in right. the online permit and plan review. So we are still in the process. We're moving forward. We also had to upgrade City Works, the new newer version, because it solved a lot of the little uh, glitches in right. order to tra transition. So uh, we're we're in the testing uh, process, and we're we're very close. Within, well, I, I think I think obviously within a, within a couple months. What I would like to see you do is get something to where you guys know where where some of these permits building permits are, are sitting or the inspections I've gotten complaints about people waiting for final inspections and people don't show up and and or you know not all of them show up when they're supposed to and I know we got people that are busy but but I mean I, I would like to see that that area improved um, you know, we don't have a lot of building going on right now. We, I mean, it's starting to pick up, thank God. And we, we I just don't want to see these people um, waiting when other towns are are a lot quicker than we are as far as getting getting the building permits signed off on and, and whatnot. So, uh, but we, again, thank you guys for what you do. You guys are, are have been wonderful for us, so I appreciate it. You're welcome. And we are making some adjustments. I've already made an adjustment with some personnel so that uh, some people can review a little bit quicker, and it took a little bit off of their place so that they can focus on reviewing developments. Right. So hopefully hopefully that will help as well as once, as soon as we get the online permit plan review. Thank you. Yeah, once that uh, permitting and um, inspector uh, information is put in City Works, you'll create a dashboard to give the status update on those just like registration, right? I mean, isn't that one of the capabilities? Yeah, the yeah. Program? We're going to continue to create these dashboards, these uh, these maps, basically these interactive maps, um, as much as possible. Uh, one of the first ones too. We also want to get the uh, the road rating one out there so that we're transparent about that, and everybody knows. Hey, this is this is what it's rated. And so so so, that, so yeah, we're we're planning on kicking a lot of those maps out as much as possible. So. Very good. Alderman Gregory, then Alderman Conley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, real quickly, um, I, 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 in this, I was reading uh, the rock and shit when you was going over this. Um, I noticed that we did do some over over in Ward Two. I, I, I can't say that the community is real happy about it. It sort of confused them on maybe why we just didn't um, repave it, or or um, rather than um, put down that that I guess you call it oil and chip or whatever. It's real dusty. Um, it doesn't stay down real well. Um, it, you know, I don't know if, if there's a better way to address these roads, but I I, I don't know. You know. Yeah. But um, I just I just wanted to make that comment, yeah. you know, um, on, on those roads in the you know Bun Park area back there, um, in that in that area there. Um, the registration numbers. I'm I'm looking at these registration permits for these. Um, I would assume houses and buildings, commercial buildings. Am I correct? Is this what this registration is for? I'm concerned our number is off. Uh, I, me and um, Waterman McMenamin talked a little bit, and you know we we feel like 172. Um, and I know you said you're working on this, so is there some more information that still needs to be entered in, into this as far as registration? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. And and, and to be, can you explain the, how a building goes on the registration prop, um, list briefly so we all understand? I think I got a gist of it. Yeah. Um, well, it's a, it's, a, it's a vacant property, and it, has, it, it depends. There are a couple different ways it can go on. It can have more than two complaints, basically, and be vacant, and the, and the utilities turned off, right, Daryl? 
And then there's also six, um, and then there's also another way that you can get on there, not as common, but if there's over six violations and it is occupied too, is another route that in essence it, it can get on the list too. Okay, okay, okay. We're looking at now is, is a new, better approach. Uh, some of the recommendations actually came from amendment and uh, the sense so on yourself as well. It's not only just how that information within the system, but to verify the information, that's gonna be key to all of this. So we're asking that our team uh, come together and stuff and actually go out there and witness exactly what is present, what is there. So the list that you're seeing right now is a building list. It's just a beginning. That number will grow more than likely. I can just say it will grow. And so we're just making sure that the data that is being presented in, that, in those particular fields is correct. So I'm asking our staff to go out there and do a physical check, not something that's just sit at a tablet above and put some in numbers in. So that's why you're seeing a little bit delay as far as in those buildings, because as they get them completed, then that number will steadily go up. So generally, it's two violations or more in an empty facility. And the empty facility is verified by the fact that we have no utilities on it, but we work with our CWLP partners to get that information. Um, I appreciate you, uh, Mr. Harris. Um, the, I just wanted to speak on a few more things. The, the railroad underpass on um, Laurel and 11th, I, I noticed that it's, it's a nice seam in the middle of those roads. I know we just got it done. We finished it early, or whoever did it finished it early. It looks a little different from the one on Ash and 11th. Um, as far as the street, the pavement, the actual pavement that's down, um, yeah, like I said, there's a nice little seam in the middle of the road on both sides of it. Um, so it just looks a little older, like, you know. I'll fall. It just looks uh, a little old. Check it out for me. Okay, yeah. Um, I am very interested in, in the overhead sewer program. I want to just get with you and discuss that. Um, the autumn reports that I've seen on here um uh, kind of concerning because um, I know – so how does it, how, can you explain to me the autumn report? So is that when every time we send in service for just sewers, drainage, or things, or does housing and um, anything yeah. that we send in? So yeah, if, there, if there's a service request, and we, we can um, expand upon it if, if, if we need to, but uh, yeah, that is if a service request was entered into City Work, so okay. uh, for our asset management system okay. this right. time. And then we can probably, we can probably develop one too for, for PLL um, if, if need be. Okay. I appreciate it. I think that is all my notes. Thank you. You're welcome. Alderman Conley, then Alderman Donnelly. Thank, thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Director and, and, and Daryl Harris. We appreciate you coming in. Um, I have to tell you, I'm, I'm very interested in this blight index. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, I'm, I'm very interested in the blight index that you're working on, and um, Kind of, can you just give a little bit of background on what sort of factors come into play when you're looking at something and, and considering putting it on that blight factor? Right. Well, the blight index uh, that we're looking at is a pilot program right now. It's right. a program which we had a, a group to come in that actually has been utilized, I believe, in Alabama, in which a, a camera projection is, a camera is placed on, and Alabama is actually placed on the... Uh, garbage trucks, but since we have three garbage haulers, we couldn't utilize that, so we thought the better approach was to actually put it on our building inspector's cars. So right now, we have a building inspector going out there, going through the area, and this camera is able to detect uh, areas and stuff, facilities that it looks at, and it says, okay, this meets the body criteria, and it has like eight or nine little checklists and stuff they do. Not all that computer, but the computer brain is able to say, okay, this is blighted, and then it gives a check number, and then, then later on, when you bring it, return it back, it gives you a rating system on that blight. So th I think th the reason I'm asking is that, you know, um, I, I do have a number of, you know, older neighborhoods yes. more towards the, you know, the eastern edge of Ward 8, and then moving west, neighborhoods that are now getting older, you know, yes. 20, 30, 40, 50 years old, um, and, and people are are talking about turnover that, you know, they're mm -hmm. starting to see siding issues that we're looking at, you know, um, some of those things that come into play that make a neighborhood look, look a little less attractive. So if you're doing this as a pilot program, is there going to be, um, is there going to be an education to, to residents that comes along with that? So you can say, look, these are things that you can do to your house. These are, oh. this is what, what you can do to keep that blight creep. 
yeah. um, to, so that we can kind of identify, give people a feel for what that actually is, but then also give them at least information tools and then, you know, background on whatever programs we have available that they can do their part to kind of stop it. Yes, Nate Did you and understand? I, Nate and I and our legal team discussed that very heavily. Uh, a lot of the things you're talking about, the fact that you brought up is the very things that that particular index is looking for. Right. It looks at old neighbor, it may bring out the fact that there's a fascia that is missing, the gutters and stuff that are starting to hang, yep. softets and stuff that are starting to be warped and damaged, and things of that nature, and it'll put on those things on factors. So one of the things that we looked at, too, is this thing that they also, that at the uh, assistance of uh, the Bloomberg study, was that it'll give it like a nudge factor ladder, which basically saying we're starting this TME deterioration and giving the homeowners or the first who exit from the place some indication that, hey, you may want to look at that fascia, you may want to look at the soffit, so you get some idea of the things that you need to do to upkeep those properties. That's part of that particular uh, program as well. I, I mean, I think that nudge letter, we're going to include various, um, like say, if you need to get rid supports. of something, then, then you'll have that link as well as uh, yeah. open, hey, you may be in an enterprise, you may be in a TIF or something along those lines, mm -hmm. or a CDBG area that you can leverage some funds, so we're also going to do right. include that in that nudge letter. Okay, I'm not sure how many of those were in my ward, but, um, but I, I will say, I, I appreciate that. I think this is a great pilot program. Um, because that, that blight creep is something that really concerns a, a lot of neighborhoods. And, and it's, you know, some of it is just very superficial, um, you know, tree trimming plantings. And I'm right now I'm sitting there thinking, oh, gosh, I got to take care of my front yard garden because it's a hot mess. But um, the thing is it can't just be identified. It, uh, we have to have resources and information and support that goes to people along with that. Um, are, I'd very much like to stay in the loop on this and, and see where you go with it. Um, again, I think it's a great idea. Uh, the more we, we maintain and improve these, especially these older neighborhoods, the better the entire city's gonna look. So um, how long do you think it's gonna take to have this mapping completed? Are you, are you doing the whole city? We're, right now, we're still in a portion of the city with the mindset of expanding, of course. Okay. Uh, but what we learned from the Bloomberg report was number one, is that a lot of times we're, like you said, identifying and bringing it to someone's attention, but we're not telling them what resources are available. Right. That the city had, they can utilize. And that's one thing I believe the Bloomberg report brought out, that we have a, several ways of channeling that information, making sure they're informed. Like in the court process is one, having them be knowledgeable uh, when someone comes in for a deplet, uh, deteriorated building or something, that ain't, we have a team and stuff from OPAD potentially to take a look and tell them what particular funds are available and loans are available, which they can address to upkeep that particular property. And can you, do you know, are you doing any of this blight review in Ward 8? We don't throughout the city. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. You said throughout the city, but you, you weren't sure when that would be completed? Are you just well, doing we're it? just starting right now. We're going through all the different wards. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay, okay, me. okay, good. He's driving the entire city. Yeah. Okay, and, but do you all know? All wards. <laughs> and as you pointed out, you've got quite a few miles of wards in, in, to, to drive through. So, but you don't, do you have an idea of when some of that information will be available to us? Well, right now we're gathering the information. And when I, I'm going to be pretty much good with a date because sometimes I put a date out there, people go like crazy we missed one day <laughs> from that date. I, how about just So what I'm going to say is as soon as the information is made available, uh -huh. we'll the end of the year. provide it to all the aldermen and stuff so they can peruse it at their leisure. Okay. I won't start bugging you for at least another week or two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You promise? I, I can't make any too many promises. But yes, I'll give you a week or two. No, I, I, again, I, I do appreciate this because I, I think it's, these are the issues that people get really concerned about and, and for us to track them and keep a finger on it and, and then also provide resources is, is critical. So thank you both very much. Alderman Donnelly. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just to kind of wrap things up, gentlemen, I, I, Mayor, uh, I'll just direct this towards you. I, I'd like to, these two gentlemen, the, your staff, the housing division, the men and women that are out on the streets doing the work, I, I can't thank you enough. And I mean that. It's not just for me. It's from the residents that have contacted us over the years. And uh, uh, you, you both, when there is an issue, whether it's rocks from somebody's driveway going on to an 80-year-old's, uh, another 80-year-old man's driveway, or uh, access, trying to get access to the bike trail, or we can go on and on and on, th these guys have gone out uh, at night, on the weekends, and tried to find a way 
to do it work, to get the problem resolved. And I, I just, I just, I really appreciate what you do. I appreciate you this presentation and uh, look forward to working with you in the future and get some of these other things done. So I try my darndest to make bring things to you that are reasonable. Not we're not going to repave the streets uh, by tomorrow. Uh, all the streets in the city, but we try to be reasonable about it and make sure you, and, and provide reasonable expectations. And again, thank you for what like you I do. Said, it takes a team. We have a great union team at the housing yes, we do. department. We have a team of eight people with the IBEW and also with ASME, members being part of that team, and they do a yeoman job of making sure that this city stays, not only uh, stays and keeps up its beautification, but to enforce the rules and stuff that maintains that beautification. Well, it's not always pretty circumstances, so thank you. Alderman Redpath. Director, um, I've talked to you several times about the Hazeldale Bridge Road, the road bridge. Um, could you add that to the agenda? Because I know it's a long process to get that thing done. Um, that, that bridge will only allow a car and a half to go under it, so people have to stop and wait to get underneath it. It's been a dangerous intersection for a long time. Uh, I want to thank you for the report. It's very informative. Uh, I know that uh, the department does great work and, and has uh, really bust their tails. I can tell you that Daryl Harris, uh, every time I call him, it's done. So, uh, Daryl, I, I appreciate you, and I appreciate uh, what you do for us. One of the things I want to talk about is the potential AR, uh, ARP money improvements. Uh, that's a that's an I, that's something we've been talking about on the council, as, as you know, that we are concerned about how that money is going to be spent. And you got you got about five different projects here that you have listed. It's great that we have them listed here, but there's nothing that says we're going to start this now. So, can we start putting dates to these things so we have an understanding on how this is going to work? These are all vital programs, and I'm not trying to take away from one ward to the other, but if we don't put dates on them. We can have ideas all we want. If they're not, if you don't put dates on them, we'll never get to them. Uh, the, there's a, a priority that I have, uh, uh, especially with the sewer replacement, because of the leakage is going on into the lake. And so you know that part. So the, that, and I've talked to um, Greg Humphreys out to the sanitary district, as you have, and you know that they they have the plans completely ready to go for that project. So I'm hoping that we can move forward on that sooner, because we want to overlay uh, one of the major roads out there is Linden Lane, which which we don't really I, we don't need to overlay roads until we do the projects. If we don't do that sewer project, we're we're or cart before the horse. That's correct. And they are working on the plans on that one specifically. We don't have all the plans done or anything along those lines. Actually, none of them are quite done. We have the estimate for the cost for all of them, but there, there is engineering that needs to be completed on the, on the various projects. But we're working with them, and that the plan is to basically get the sewer project completed before we do the yeah, uh, obviously. Yeah, sewers in the that's city, not just in Ward 1, sewers in the city, are, they, they all need work. We, I get that. Um, a, a, a temporary solution to the safety issue on Hazeldale Road where the bridge is is the Homeowners Association had a meeting last week and asked if we could look at putting a sidewalk out the backside out to 11th Street so they can get to, so they can walk over to UIS and they can walk down. So I was going to call your deputy director, Daryl, and ask if he could come out and take a look at it for us to see if it's a it's not a very long sidewalk that need put in but it's something that would solve the safety problem right now if you, if you would uh, if, if it's okay if he comes out and takes a look yeah I, I actually took took a quick peek at it just need to make sure that it doesn't affect the detention but I think we can modify it design wise um, and we'll have one of our engineers actually take a, take a look at that and double check the calculations for the detention but I think that that can work out I think that's a good solution uh, for the interim otherwise uh, your report's well done and I, I appreciate what you guys do thank you thanks any other questions or comments? Yes. I, yeah, Alderman Williams. Yeah, real quick. So on road conversions, um, what's that? That's just going to be a change to the road period? Is that pretty much what? It's what in it, essence changing it from an oil and chip road to building it to asphalt, converting it to an asphalt road. Okay, bit, because I can, overlay. Well, I just saw the old Rochester Road piece in there, you know, and I know that the popular places entrance we're looking at that being the new entry in and out for that complex. And I just wanted to understand that. I kind of want to see that kind of get straightened out when we get up by growth to go straight into South Grand instead of the wiggle. So, you know, uh, I appreciate you for that. And then on the sewer piece, um, 
we still have uh, the areas of the east side, I think more in all of them in Gregory's ward and mine where these folks are, you know, to run the washer machine, you got to stop it and then take your shower, then stop the shower and then, you know, dealing with, I think it's Alkin Court is one of, one of the areas and a uh, few areas. So there's some severe sewage situations there. So I'm kind of along with uh, Alderman Redpath when we start looking at the timeline. I also want to see some kind of priority because that, that's really dire when people tell me that kind of stuff. You know, to take a shower, I got to make sure this is turned off with it, and all this because our sewer system, and it, it's the same families that uh, at the ward meetings, you know, that they got your card and did all that. So we definitely want to get that addressed. You know, I think that's kind of more critical than anything I didn't heard about a sewer. I noticed sewers well, may go into the lake. But I've been sitting going in the lake and going in and did these folks home or in their wash machine and, you know, all that disgusting stuff. So, you know. And I think they really should reach out to our sewer division as well if they're having those issues and they may be eligible for that overhead sewer program. Yes, so we can yes. at least get them on the list. I think a couple more are aware and have been. Yeah. The one, I think the one you talked about, the one the neighborhood association, we did reach out to that. Okay. Two families. Okay. That, it was dealt with that situation even helped assist with the application as well. And like everybody else, I, I appreciate the work that your department does. I, I do think it's one of the hardest working departments in the city because it's it's the one I utilize the most as well. And um, and I appreciate you guys for it. I often think I can't wait to the next budget time because I think you guys are undermanned. I just think you're overwhelmed and undermanned. And, and it makes us as a city seem like we don't respond quick enough to get things done. So I appreciate you. Appreciate that. Any other questions or comments? Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. I entertain a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the September 7th, 2021 regular city council meeting. Move, and move, Mayor. Second. We move and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Chair, I entertain a motion to incorporate the pre council first reading of ordinances and the records of the city move. council meeting. Second. 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 We move and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. The chair will entertain a motion to incorporate the pre council reading of the consent agenda in the record of the city council. So moved, Mayor. Second. second. Been moved and second. Um, there's, is there a motion to remove agenda number 2021 364 from the consent agenda, placed on debate for public hearing? So moved. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to place the consent agenda on final passage. So moved. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Mayor. Alderman. Uh, there's one ordinance here where I haven't had a chance to discuss it with our corporation council. It's number 2021-375. It's a liquor license for Mod Pizza. And after we had our meeting last Tuesday, um, there was discussions between the restaurant and some of the na neighbors immediately to the east. This particular site was once a, a, um, a bank site, town and country bank site, so it's got a restaurant for the first time, and for the first time ever there's outside music in the evening. The um, Mod Pizza's had some difficulty turning off their music at night, so it's even though they shut down at 10 on most nights or 11 on other nights, sometimes the music went on until 1 in the morning. And so we've reached an agreement with Mod Pizza uh, whereby they agree that music will never be outside beyond business hours and the, they're going to downsize the um, speaker system for the amplified music and redirect the speaker so it's not going towards the residents so much. So the question is, do we need to put that agreement somehow in the ordinance, and if we have to put the agreement in the ordinance, do we have to remove this from consent and put it on debate, or do we? can we make the amendment right here and now um, as part of the consent agenda? So I, I don't think this comes up very often, so I just needed some guidance on how to approach this. Um, is this, uh, did the 
Uh, is it, I assume it's already properly zoned for allowing this Yeah, it's use. zoned properly. And so are you talking about uh, asking potentially for there to be a condition on the liquor license? Correct. They've never had a liquor license till now, okay. and this is uh, service and liquor only. I, I would say that, um, may I say this, that if it's a consensus of the council that that's appropriate, the liquor commissioner can include, remember, this is just creating the license. So the liquor commissioner issues the license, and we could put that condition on the license. Okay, that would satisfy the general manager for Mod Pizza is here tonight. And uh, have I accurately stated what our yep. discussion has been, uh, Mr. Evans? Okay. Because if you recall, the council doesn't grant the license they create, then it goes through the regular process. And so there have been instances where uh, licenses have been issued with a condition. So mayor's indicated that he's fine with that if that's the yeah. consensus of the council and the uh, licensee does not object. Okay, and I have discussed this with Todd Oliver today, and I think he can help you, Mr. Mayor, if you need to write the correct language for the issuance of the liquor license. So it's a condition to limit outdoor music to the hours of operation, or should we say 11 o'clock, or what? It's uh, 10 o'clock uh, through Thursday, Monday through Thursday, and it's 11 o'clock Friday and Saturday nights. And there was an agreement to have the, the music at a moderate level. So there'll be a uh, condition to, um, do we need to make a motion on that? Or no, I'm it saying out? If, you're, if you're comfortable okay. with that, we can just, in, remember, this is creating the license. The, the actual application, the license mayor goes to you, and you have to sign it, and we can <clears throat> add that as a condition. Okay. Any other? Alderman Hanauer. Yeah, just to be clear, 2021-367, uh, um, we amended that. Uh, it's got Roy's name on it. Uh, we amended it to include me, to add me on it instead. That, that's um, correct, and that, that's been that's been done and will be reflected on what ultimately gets signed. Okay. Yes. I just wanted to, yeah. There were actually, I think, uh, I believe there were a couple that were addressed in committee, and then there were also a couple of just technical things. All of those have been addressed, so the uh, the uh, final product that actually is signed will reflect those changes. Okay. I just wanted to sure. Thank yeah. you. Any other discussion on the consent agenda? And all those in favor of the consent agenda say aye. Aye. For the aye. motion, I should say. Yeah. All opposed say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to place the consent agenda on final passage. So moved. Second. second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? Yeah. Present. Oh, okay. All in favor of the uh, motion or the consent agenda, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. And uh, Alderman Fulgenzi abstains from all the liquor ordinances on the consent agenda. And all the woman. Uh, and all the woman uh, purchase. Uh, DOT. Yep. Abstains from the IDOT uh, ordinances. Thank you. And the consent agenda passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Agendas number 2021-239, 2021-336, 2021-337, 2021-365, and 2021-370 remain tabled or in committee. Next item on the agenda is 2021-353, ordinance authorizing execution of an agreement with Arch Images Inc. for architectural design services for up to three fire stations in an amount not to exceed $725,000 for the Springfield Fire Department. Chair will entertain a motion place agenda number 2021-353 on final passage. So moved. Second. The move and second. Any discussion? Uh, discussion, Mr. Mayor. Alderman McMenamo. I'm com uh, we definitely need a new firehouse in Ward 6 where it's landlocked. And we had an outstanding presentation, I thought, from the architectural firm. I thought they did a good job explaining how they, the approach they wanted to use. I'm going to be a no vote on this, though, because I think we're moving too fast, too quickly with, I guess, three firehouses when we don't yet have any agreement regarding more flexible staffing from our fire department and regarding the repositioning of our firehouses to create uh, uh, again, better usage of limited uh, personnel uh, available to fight fires. So that's the reason I'm a no vote. Alderman Redpath? Uh, I, I kind of agree with the comments Alderman McMenamin made. I, I have trouble with the amount of money, but th this is the design work, Alderman, and I think that we still have the opportunity to say which firehouses are going to be built 
and when. Is that correct, Corporation Counsel? It, yes, if you recall, this this is just the preliminary step because what will end up happening through the process is each and every location, property acquisition, contracts, and so on, are voted on separately. So they will actually come back to the council. So that's that's my, although I agree with some of your comments, I, I think that we've got to push this forward because it's a safety issue with that firehouse being especially Ward 6 boxed in and the other one, Ward 8, I think, is that 8? Mm -hmm. Yes. That, that has to be moved for traffic reasons, but we still need to do some reconfiguration on how we're going to do the ones out north and, and maybe one at the southwest side of town. Those those discussions need to still go forward, and uh, so we'll have a plenty ample time to dis discuss and debate this stuff, but I think we need to pass this ordinance. Yeah, I don't know if the uh, chief or the individual from March Images want to come forward, but uh, in essence, what we have right now are two trucks at... Uh, we have the staffing on Coke Mill, so we can staff another station if need be. All we're paying for when the time comes is the uh, facility itself, and we have uh, gaps of services that aren't covered right now that we would move towards. But again, uh, as Alderman Redpath had stated and others previously, is that uh, this is a preliminary design work. We're uh, identifying uh, locations right now, and then the Arch Images uh, can do the uh, uh, the analysis, what uh, properties would uh, be able to be utilized and move forward in that direction. But with regards to any purchase of property or anything of that nature, it has to come back before council. So, Chief, you have anything you want to add or no? That covers it? Okay. Any other questions or discussion? No. All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. And the ordinance passes nine voting yes, one voting no. Next item on the agenda is 2021-362, an ordinance authorizing execution of an annexation agreement between the City of Springfield, Illinois and Williamsville State Bank and Trust, trust number 9504, for the property located at 3531 Old Jacksonville Road. Chair will entertain a motion to recess the regular meeting of the City Council to hold a public hearing regarding this annexation agreement. Second. Second. The move and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed will uh, say no. Motion carries. Public hearing is now open. Does anybody wish to address this annexation agreement? Does anybody wish to address this annexation agreement? Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn the public hearing and reconvene the regular meeting of the city aye. council. Aye. The move and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2021-362 on final passage. So moved. Second. The move and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. And the uh, ordinance passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is docket number 2021-363, an ordinance annexing certain described real property located at 30. 3531 Old Jacksonville Road. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2021-363 on final passage. So moved. Second. second. We moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. And the ordinance passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is number 2021-364, ordinance vacating a portion of Rachel Lane between Old Jacksonville Road and Conifer Drive to trust number 9504 and, convene, and conveying new alignment for Rachel Lane from trust 9504 to the city of Springfield, Illinois. Chair will entertain a motion to place or to motion to recess the regular meeting of the city council to hold a public hearing regarding the vacation Still of the second. 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 Been moved and second. Any discussion? Yes. Um, Alderman um, Williams. Um, I, I can't find where you read that. You said 364? That's right. It was in consent. It was in a consent agenda. Okay. We had to pull it out for this annexation. Yes. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Public hearing is now open. Does anybody wish to address the council regarding the vacation of this property? Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn the public hearing and reconvene the regular Move. meeting of the city council. Okay. The movement second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2021-364 on final passage. So moved. Second. 
Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. And the agenda number passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is number 2021-371, an ordinance to decrease the number of class C liquor licenses by one and increase the number of class B liquor licenses by one for hy V Inc. doing business as hy V C Store located at 1025 Outer Park Drive. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2021-371 on final passage. Mr. Mayor, on this one here, um, we've got um, a situation where uh, I, I haven't been able to get together with hy V to discuss this particular ordinance, and MacArthur Boulevard Association doesn't meet this month in September. So uh, there's some, just, I, I want to make sure I understand what hy V is doing here. They've got three liquor licenses um, for the grocery store, for the restaurant, and for the convenience store. They've got two drive throughs I think by code we have um, precluded liquor sales for drive throughs uh, beyond after a certain date, some of the older ones were, were grandfathered. I just want to make sure I understand what Hy-Vee is doing here. So I just asked the council, if, can we hold this uh, for two weeks and then take it up after? Is um, there a motion to discuss? hold for two weeks? Is there a second? Second. Second. Been moved and second to hold for two weeks. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Thank motion you. carries. Chair will entertain a motion to suspend the rules and place on first reading agenda number 2021-393, an ordinance approving the appointment of Amelia Gooding Cheek to the Civil Service Commission. So moved. Second. Right. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to suspend the rules and place on first reading agenda number 2021-394, ordinance amending chapter 90, adding section 90.15.4 of the 1988 City of Springfield Code of Ordinances as amended changing from a package only sale license to an on-site consumption license. So moved. Aye, second. That moved second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Shall entertain a motion to suspend the rules in place on first reading agenda number 2021-395, uh, an ordinance extending the term of the South Central Business District an additional 13 years contingent upon the completion of development agreement for the Legacy Point Sports Complex. So moved. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Is there any unfinished business come before the council? Yes. Alderman Redpath. In, in light of the shootings that we had this weekend at uh, the place at Dirty South, are we doing anything with that liquor license? Yeah, I think uh, we have served the uh, establishment of the proprietor, and they're suspended uh, until a hearing, which would be uh, in early October. Because that was the protocol we done with other places that had those situations until we get this uh, panned out. We we need to do that. So. Yeah, that's going to be the uh, process. And uh, similar to the wet bar, they'll have to come up with mitigation that's acceptable to the city. But first, it has to go to the uh, Liquor Commission, and they'll make a determination of the recommendation to uh, uh, the Liquor Commissioner. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. Any other unfinished business? Mayor. Alderman Hanauer. I just, I'll be quick. Um, I-3 Broadband is back at it again, and I am getting flooded with calls. Um, we have got to get them to do a better job at correcting, at sending out, not um, marketing flyers saying they're going to be around, but actual construction postcards or something telling people that they're going to be around. I've had, uh, I got a complaint today where yesterday um, somebody, one, they, they hit a CWLP cable and the people were told they had to get a private electrician to fix it, try to get a private electrician when uh, in, in, a, in a quick period of time is awful hard. Um, they, uh, they ended up, I think CWLP came out, so I don't know, somehow they got it fixed. I, I appreciate that, Doug, but we have got to do something with this company. I know we're limited, but um, there's very limited um, uh, notification and if you see their flyers on notification what it is is it's truly it, it looks like they're trying to sell you something and it goes right in a dumpster and so um, I've been getting hit every time they move to a new block I get bombarded 
I promise you, when you guys, they get in your wards, Aaron's already seen it. Yep. They, the people, the people look out and they're digging a big hole. Now, granted, it's in the right of way, but they're digging a hole in the yard. And people come unglued. So if we could get in contact with them, and they got to do something better as far as, um, you know, letting people know on yeah, their uh, notifications. Thank you. I think we'll find out how they're uh, communicating that, but uh, we'll get a schedule for the rest of this year and make them, or at least put it out there. But the other thing uh, is, uh, is there any fine that we can levy with regards to disruption of service? Well, our electric? They violate, there are certain circumstances where, yes, there can be fines. And I think, uh, is it not correct, didn't I3 broadband actually end up getting sold? Yeah, it's a change of ownership. They, they ended up being bought up by a much larger company, but we can definitely follow up to find out about the communications and what their plan is for the rest of the year. I would appreciate it because, uh, I mean, I think they're out in Deerfield right now. They're, they've been in Oak Park. Deerfield, you said? Are they, well, they, I know they're in Oak Park in uh, Deerfield, and um, they'll be coming to a ward your one your favorite wards soon and uh, uh they're they're the disruption with people they people just come unglued there it's yep, yep we'll uh, circle back around to them and have them come in any other unfinished business uh this weekend's the route mother road route 66 festival parade is friday at six o'clock i believe the lineup is at capital city shopping center they'll progress downtown and activities on Friday and Saturday, and then Sunday's the award ceremony. Uh, is there any new business come before the council? There is a public hearing tomorrow in the city council chambers with regards to the CAPER, which is the annual report uh, due to HUD, and that's at 5.30 in the city council. Uh, there's two people signed up to speak, Emma Coates. Is Emma Coates here? The other one is Patrick Sheehan. Patrick Sheehan? Patrick Sheehan's gone. Yeah, he left. And okay. Then, and then Alice Rainey. Oh, Alice Rainey? She left. She <laughs> <laughs> thought it was too cold in here and she had to go home. So she got a coat on. It's cold in here. I told him I was going to bring him a slab of bacon, but I forgot it tonight. <laughs> uh, there, I want to thank you for trying to do something with uh, South, Dirty South. It's been that way ever since it's, I can remember, but they changed the name and moved it to Dirty South, and it's living up to its name. But I think one month is not long enough. I think they should be suspended permanently and closed permanently, but that's my opinion. I'm stuck with it. But I, I came down to ask, what is Poplar Place becoming a racetrack? Because they'll go around two, three, four times, and then my our street, Livingston, becomes the pit spot. You know, like you pull off the racetrack and you got to go to the pit spot. Well, that's the way this little place is now, and it has really irritated a lot of people on the block. Maybe Roy hasn't got a lot of the phone calls, but they all know I got a big mouth, so they all come to me. You know, so I would like to know what you're going to do about it. I know the officers have a hard time, especially when 13th and Cook decides to have a Wild West show, okay? I think it's time that we do something about Popular Place. Tear it down, burn it, I don't give a darn, but make it a flat building, flat, okay? For they can't do a whole lot of going around, going around, going around, going around. And it don't stop, it really don't. And it's, it's getting to the point where they'll speed down uh, Livingston as fast as they can, and the only decent thing they do is they stop at the stoplight, stop sign. Yeah, the uh, developers reconfiguring the whole uh, development, and that will include uh, taking a look at the street structure and uh, taking into consideration the uh, safety and working with the police department as well as public works to make any changes uh, that are recommended. Well, it, I understand that. Then we have another problem. Roy knows about the dog, okay? 
Now, you may laugh all you want, <laughs> but when people walk down the street, I have a lady friend that walks her dog, and it attacked her. And we can't have that. We can't have that type of stuff going on. We just can't. Is it a and straight a dog? Little, a little kid would walk down there, and that dog's out behind, uh, uh, underneath the fence right in the streets, you know. It's pretty hard. I mean, a little girl get hurt. It's a pit bull. And don't tell me that they're nice, because I know they are. But it's the idea, if you don't train them right, they're worse, OK? And he don't, he's not, he won't just walk up to you, <laughs> you know, or laugh, or, you know, growl, or whatever. He don't say anything. He is, like, ready to strike. Uh-uh, we can't have that in a neighborhood with kids. That's is ridiculous. Is he on a leash or fenced in? Uh, he's pinned in, but he's not on a leash. And uh, years ago, they were required to be fenced in yard and on a leash. Well, nobody understands that, but this dog needs to be on a leash, even inside his... Uh, if you have yeah. the address, we can uh, send public health um, animal oh, control so, over there. Uh, huh? Mayor, huh? If, Mayor, if... <laughs> Yeah, right. Yep. Yeah. Go ahead. If you would, oh, um, officer, can you come up, up to the mic, please? Okay. So he's he's been at this house several times. Animal patrol has, I mean, animal control has been at the house several times. Uh, it's the issue. I mean, it, it, it's a serious issue. However, um, I mean, we're just following the law right, right now. I know a lot of the neighborhood is upset. And, and, and want something done. Uh, he, to my understanding, the residents understands that the dog's outside, it has to be on a leash. Right. It, it, when it's in the yard, it can't get out. It has gotten out a couple of times, because I've seen, um, they take pictures now, and then bring it to me and say, hey, see, he's loose. I want him fined, I want him that. But I wanted the officer to speak to the latest and the, uh, update us on if they've been fined or warned or what's going on so that uh, Miss Ramey doesn't feel like we're not doing anything, you know. Yeah, so I've made contact numerous times with the owner. Uh, everything that we're discussing now has been addressed to them. Uh, there was a call, I believe animal control was out, and I believe either they applied their own warnings and or fines, and I can get that information, but I know that they have been looped in on this, and then I've asked for any uh, picture or video that I can also provide them too for then if something I don't see firsthand. Okay, so so I, I had him make this statement because I, I want you to understand. I know that the other neighbor's very upset too. There's some that won't walk that block now and things like that. But when people own animals and they feel they have a right, at first they were saying, hey, we, we, we don't have that. But now they do use a, a dog leech. You know, uh, they did plug up that hole where the dog was getting out. I, I do see attempts. However, I, it's like anything else. You know, people want the dog gone. And then, I, I hate to say it like this, from my understanding, until the dog does kill another dog or do something crazy, we, we just can't tell the guy he can't have a dog. Am, am I right? Yeah, and then addressing it, trying to do the educational part, uh, trying to reason with the owner and try to explain all the concerns and uh, just paint the picture for that person as well. But uh, yes, and then until there's a violation or something that applies either by ordinance or with animal control, then we're kind of limited in that way. Yeah. Well, I would like that information from Animal Patrol as as well. You know. follow up. Okay. All the women to send so. Not me that is worried about it. Yep. But I think the Crown Plaza. I'm not. I mean, the uh, dog catchers need to do better in what they're doing, and they need to come out when they're called, and not sit back and say, "Oh, well, it's all right. They'll take care of it." That's not the way this is supposed to run. If that dog hurts a a person then that somebody will get something done. Well, we can't wait for that. We need to have that dog trained or he needs to be gone. Simple fact. Well, but we got to follow the law, Alice, is all I'm saying. Listen, and it's following the law. Well, You've well, done yeah. everything when you animal possibly you to get address to the this chair lady. for your yeah. comments, please. When Animal Sorry. Patrol gets there, the, 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 the dog is back on. in the pen or the dog is back in the yard. So Animal Patrol is frustrated, too, because they get these calls and why they don't want to come every time. By the time they get to the neighborhood, the dog's either inside the house or inside where he's supposed to be. Right. And, and, and I don't know a I'll, lot about the law I'll and, get a and what should happen. I'll get a dog and I'll get a little dial and I'll put it out there and let's see who gets done first. All the women dissent so? 
first of all, it's animal control's job to come every time they're called. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's their job. Yeah, well, they don't work for me is what I wanted to understand. No, but that's why we need a representative on the Board of Health, which we do not have as Ding a city right now. <laughs> He's over there. Board. What you want? <laughs> yeah, no, I was supposed to be on there. Um, well, anyway, that was a long time ago. Um, but this is a consistent and persistent issue with animal control. I have another, I have some, uh, the same issue going on in my ward, where there's a, a dog that just wanders into this guy's yard and by the time animal control get, gets out there, he catches the guy on his camera, or the dog on his camera. And it's a dangerous dog and nothing happens. So we'll have a discussion with animal uh, control. It's an department that we are funding. Right. So uh, we'll uh, see if there's a way to ticket the individuals if they're caught on tape. Alderman Redpath and Alderwoman Conley. I pa I'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say it all? I Did I cover it? it for me. <laughs> Alderwoman Conley. Thank you. I, I was just going to remind um, Alderman Williams that actually that department does work for us. We are all residents mm -hmm. of Sangamon County well, and that's true. Yes, yes. they should be coming out every time we call them. Well, you know, I, I, I mean, as far as being a city department and doing it. Yeah, but we, I mean, I, I, we, we've had this conversation so many times. I pay my county taxes. I pay my city taxes. Mm -hmm. People who live within the city of Springfield pay animal control twice. And yeah, they should be out. Well, Public Works said they'd take over animal control. Didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> you just lost Hilltop Road. <laughs> That's right. Uh oh. Done. It wouldn't be the first done, time. Done, done. <laughs> so, is there anybody else wish to address the council? As a reminder, uh, today in history, this is September 21st, uh, made famous by a Chicago group called Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yes. So we wish that all your days be uh, full of dancing and joy. Oh and uh, as we adjourn, Tony's going to play us out. Right, Tony? All right. Are you going to sing along? There's a motion to adjourn. To adjourn. So Second. Second. Yeah. All in favor, say aye. I don't have any idea what that was about. Uh, <laughs> meetings adjourned. Maybe you won't play us out. <laughs> he missed his cue.